Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today at the Clay County Sheriff's Office. We are here today to highlight two different cases. The first case involves a large seizure of illegal, dangerous drugs that crossed over into several counties here in Northeast Florida. The second case, which is separate from the first, involves the arrest of a subject for his involvement in the death of an, inv of an individual uh, from a fentanyl overdose. Before we get too deep into the details of both cases, I want to first invite Attorney General Ashley Moody to the podium. Since day one, Attorney General Moody has proven herself a vital and valuable partner as we continue to fight the scourge of drugs that are coming into our communities. The Attorney General and her staff have made themselves available to all of law enforcement, not only as a resource of information, but also as a leader on forward-thinking policies and unprecedented actions, especially in regards to the fentanyl crisis, which has proven to be one of the most dangerous and deadly illicit drugs of our generation. Attorney General Moody, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. And Sheriff, let's begin by saying we all hope that you have a speedy recovery. Yes, <laughs> Not much will keep her from the community and getting out there herself and taking part, but maybe a scooter has done the trick. Right. <laughs> but we wish you back out there as soon as possible, keeping the streets of Clay County safe. Uh, thank you for those of you that are with us today to highlight the important work of law enforcement, men and women here in Clay County. And I know that there have been other stories uh, out of uh, Duval County and other areas from Northeast Florida regarding seizures of fentanyl, large amounts of fentanyl. And I know Sheriff Leeper, who also joins us today, is passionate about this, is working daily with his uh, deputies, and will also have announcement on what they're doing in their county to stem the tide of deadly fentanyl that is flowing into the state of Florida. We are in the midst of an unprecedented risk to Floridians. Um, this highly toxic synthetic opioid, opioid called fentanyl has flooded into our country. The potency coupled with it, the, the sheer volume that has made it into our country and our state has placed us at great risk. Not only for those that are using illicit substances which may be laced with fentanyl without their knowledge. And we know that we're seeing record number of overdoses. Last year, we, we lost almost 300 people a day to overdose, the majority of those to fentanyl. Fentanyl is the largest killer of working age population, 18 to 45 right now, right now. And it's not just those using illicit drugs. Just by coming into contact with this, we have seen those are responding to those that have overdosed, have had reactions and overdose. We've seen young children, infants in my home county have died as a result of exposure to fentanyl. We know that young people are being targeted, even the way that the cartels are now designing fentanyl in bright colors to attract young people and targeting them online to uh, take counterfeit pills. You'll often see when fentanyl is seized, you'll see it seized with a device that can make pills. Those are all counterfeit drugs laced with fentanyl, and as we know, one pill can kill. So events like today, where we highlight the great work of the men and women of law enforcement that are working diligently to take this off the street are so very important. Not only to recognize their achievements and what they are doing in this fight, but to again remind the community of how deadly this substance is. If you are struggling with an addiction and have thought about whether you should get help, the time for thinking about it is over. You must get treatment now because you could die as a result of taking an illicit substance that could now be laced with fentanyl. In fact, there's a high probability it will be laced with fentanyl. That's why in Florida we have launched recently a site called treatmentatlas.org. You can put in the type of addiction that you are struggling with, your payment options, your location, 
and it will give you where you can go to seek help now. And we also want to encourage our law enforcement partners around the state to continue their aggressive efforts. If you learn of drug traffickers who are poisoning Floridians with fentanyl, go after them aggressively. And if someone dies as a result of their actions, charge them with murder. Because that is what this is. This is a substance that will kill. And people are selling this and poisoning Floridians knowing that it can have deadly consequences. The result of today's uh, announcement, as you will see, 8.5 kilograms of fentanyl seized. That is enough to kill in Northeast Florida 4 million people, not just here in Clay County, not just in Duval County, but enough to kill in this one seizure, this one announcement today, the entire populations of not just Clay and Duval, St. John's, Flagler, Putnam, Nassau, Volusia, Bradford, Union, Baker, Marion, Alachua, Lake, Seminole, Columbia, Hamilton, Gilchrist, and Levy counties. Four million people could die as a result of this one seizure. And that does not include the seizures that were announced in Duval County, and that does not include the seizures that you will hear about of other Northeast County law enforcement. This is serious. The DEA has said this is the most dangerous substance they have dealt with, the most dangerous drug. It is so serious that I now have recruited and joined with a bipartisan coalition of attorneys general around the nation begging to have this substance, fentanyl, declared a weapon of mass destruction. And why is that? Because it is a chemical that can ca cause large amounts of deaths. And we are seeing increase in mass casualty events right here in Florida. In Hillsborough County, officers rolled up at a location, seven people were unconscious. In rural Gadsden County, in one weekend, nearly 20 people overdosed, nine died. That was a county that didn't see one overdose death the year prior. This is serious. And I'm so grateful to the sheriff and the men and women standing behind me who understand that we've got our fight cut out for us and who understand we need Floridians to help us in this fight. Start by getting help if you need it. We've also launched a tool where if you know of someone who's peddling poison, if you know of someone who is dealing in fentanyl, if you know of someone who is causing deaths, Tell us, you don't even have to give your name. Call star star tips from any cell phone. We've set it up so you can anonymously report and help these folks get this dangerous substance out of our communities. Understand that if you are a parent like me, of young children, just because your children are young, they are not immune. We are seeing this show up in elementary schools. We are seeing kids give their friends pills that they say are Xanax or Adderall and parents are losing their children. So like me, take the time now to understand it's not a time to think about how you're going to have the conversation. It's not a time to sit on it for a few more months. Have the difficult conversation with your children right now because one pill can kill. We know that nearly half of pills, counterfeit pills that are seized, are laced with fentanyl. Nearly half. We've never seen a statistic like that. And just to again impress upon you how serious it is right now, last, in July, we saw the most fentanyl seized in that month. It could kill the entire U.S. population from the amount of fentanyl seized in one month at the U.S. border one month. So I leave today pleading with Floridians, get help, help us do our jobs, help us protect Florida, call Star Star Tips if you have any information. And if you see a law enforcement officer who is placing their own lives at risk just dealing with this substance, trying to help those that have overdosed, trying to save their lives, say thank you. Because what once was a dangerous job, as we all knew and expected, has become even more dangerous. 
and we are seeing first responders that come in contact and make arrests with this deadly substance themselves start experiencing symptoms and some have had to go to the hospital as a result. So we, we're so grateful to Clay County for hosting this event, for highlighting not only the great work of their deputies, but highlighting for all of Florida how we are all in this fight. We can all help uh, stop this terrible tide of death that is taking hold within the United States and within our own state. And I am grateful to be in a state that doesn't accept risk without fighting back. So thank you so much to Clay County and all our law enforcement men and women. Pull my notes out of here to specifically talk about the two cases today. All right. Thank you, Attorney General Moody, for your wise words. And and uh, and folks, we're not understating the dangers uh, when it comes to fentanyl. And today, I want to talk about two cases involving fentanyl. In two cases um, that highlight the exceptional work that is going on here at the Clay County Sheriff's Office. You know, we remain committed to removing uh, dangerous drugs from our streets. The most popular drugs of choice today are often mixed with the drug fentanyl. We have seen fentanyl in marijuana, cocaine, opioids, methamphetamine, and just about everything else. Fentanyl is responsible for countless deaths throughout our nation. In fact, this year so far in Clay County, public safety has responded to 261 overdose calls with 34 confirmed drug-related deaths and six suspected drug-related overdose deaths. These deaths are more than just numbers. They are sons, they are daughters, they are moms and dads, and they are our brothers and sisters. This is very important to us. In July of this year, the Clay County Sheriff's Office Narcotics um, Unit received a tip from the Florida Highway Patrol regarding large amounts of narcotics being sold in Clay County. After receiving this information, our investigators began to piece together their case. Dubbed the Lucky Sevens Investigation and with the assistance of our local, state, and federal partners, detectives from our agency began working on a very large puzzle that included Clay County, Duval County and Nassau County that we know of. The puzzle also included pieces from California and California is where the shipments of these illegal drugs were originating. Investigators learned that dangerous and illegal drugs were being sent through the mail to various locations in Northeast Florida. Once the deliveries were made, these distributors would push these drugs into every corner of our community. Investigative efforts also revealed that large cash shipments were being sent back to California through the mail. The pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place as the drug trafficking organization's key players were identified and surveillance operations began. Probable cause for search warrants was developed and investigative, as investigative activity verified the shipments of illegal drugs into Clay County and the drug distribution taking place. On September 10th, the Clay County Narcotics Unit, Clay County SWAT team, and several partner agencies served two search warrants in Clay County related to this investigation. One residence in the Raggedy Point area and the other in the Heritage Hills subdivision. These search warrants resulted in a very large seizure of drugs and weapons, and as a result, two people have been arrested. Those two people are Alvin A.J. Mercado and Jason Setzer. The investigation revealed that they headed the Clay County portion of this drug trafficking organization. Setzer has been charged with trafficking in fentanyl, trafficking in cocaine, trafficking in methamphetamine, possession of over 20 grams of cannabis, conspiracy to traffic in fentanyl in excess of 2,000 grams, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Setzer is facing up to 140 years in prison with a 25-year minimum mandatory. He is currently in the Clay County Jail with a bond of $17 million. 
Also charged is Alvin A.J. Mercado, Jr. Mercado is charged with trafficking in fentanyl and conspiracy to traffic in fentanyl in excess of 2,000 grams. Mercado is facing up to 60 years in prison with a 25-year minimum mandatory sentence. He is in the Clay County Jail with a bond of $10 million. The bonds issued for these defendants speak volumes to the serious nature of the offenses for which these defendants have been charged. In addition to the illegal and dangerous drugs seized, we seized 30 firearms, ranging from assault weapons to handguns and other firearms. Included in this weapon count were four handguns with no serial numbers, which are commonly referred to as ghost guns. All of the seized firearms are associated with Setzer, who is also charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Firearms are a key tool in the drug trafficking trade, and an arsenal like this in the hands of a drug dealing felon is a dangerous situation. We were fortunate to get these guns off the street. To date, from this criminal enterprise, the Clay County Sheriff's Office, uh, along with our investigative partners, have seized approximately 8,350 grams or 8.35 kilos of fentanyl, 1,366 grams or 1.36 kilos of cocaine, 2,387 grams or 2.3 kilos of methamphetamine, which is 5.26 pounds, and a total of $183,000 uh, in U.S. currency from this drug enterprise. This investigation is active and other arrests are likely, so I can't go into any further details about the ongoing investigation. But, but I do want to go back to the fentanyl discussion. And I'll, I want to make one thing very clear, and, and you know, I think we've, we've said it over and over, and I'm going I'm to keep saying it. This, this is a pencil right here. You take the tip of this pencil, and you put a couple of grains of fentanyl on it, that could kill somebody. This is a replication of the fentanyl kilos that were seized. The actual fentanyl is too dangerous to bring up here. So we did a replication. Tip of a pencil, eight of these. If that doesn't give you some idea about how dangerous this drug is, I'm not sure what else will. As the Attorney General said, this is enough fentanyl seized just in this one case to kill over four million people. As sheriff, I want to again thank all who are involved in putting these two very dangerous drug distributors away and getting them off our streets. To all the Clay County Sheriff's Office team members and everyone else who had a hand in this investigation, I am proud of each and every one of you for your commitment and dedication. We had a whole uh, litany, a whole host of partner agencies um, that worked with us on this investigation. And we, we could not have done it without them. And to the community out there at large, let me first say thank you for continuing to come forward with information regarding the dangerous drugs that are being, that are being peddled in our community. And I promise you that me and this team that stands behind me here right now will continue to work to keep the drugs off of our Clay County streets. Now, I'm going to talk about the second case. This is a, another case that is unrelated to um, this seizure, and, but it is involving fentanyl. Uh, and it is another example of the commitment that we have in fighting these dangerous drugs. Uh, on May 11th of this year, 31-year-old Alexis or Alex Kovalov was found dead in his home in Green Cove Springs. Drugs and drug paraphernalia were present at the scene of his death, and an autopsy determined that Kovalov died of a drug overdose that included fentanyl. Evidence from the scene indicated that Michael Stanley may have been responsible for selling Kovalov drugs the day before he overdosed. Cell phone communications linked the two men in an exchange of money and a meeting at a retail store uh, on Fleming Island. Surveillance from the store shows the men entering the men's restroom at the store for a brief meeting. A witness identified Stanley as an individual who had sold drugs to Kovaloff in the past. Stanley was subsequently interviewed, presented with the evidence, and made incriminating statements concerning drug sales to Kovaloff. Today I am announcing that 39-year-old Michael Stanley has been arrested on the charge of manslaughter 
and is being held responsible for Alexa's death. Stanley was a drug dealer in Clay County, and now he sits in the Clay County Jail. Let both of these cases serve as a reminder to our community that if you are a drug dealer in Clay County, we are going to fine you and we are going to help hold you accountable. If you're a drug user and you need help, please reach out to us. We have the resources and the personnel in Clay County to help those in need. And with that, I'll take any questions. Given the amount of drugs that was seized, obviously that by far surpasses uh, the uh, threshold for federal charges. Are you guys also looking to not only have them prosecuted at the state level, but also at the federal level as well? All of that is still being considered, Eric. Um, we have uh, some pieces that we still need to get put together of this puzzle, but I think at this point, anything, uh, that potential uh, does exist. Also, um, looking at the narcotics that was seized, um, it's no secret that your Sinaloa cartel and your cartel Jalisco Degeneration are the two most prominent cartels that uh, sell their drugs to Northeast Florida, have them brought in. And with that, those cartels will typically, especially when it comes to the cocaine and the fentanyl, they will, they have brands mm -hmm. in which they will um, uh, label those brands with an impression. I'm wondering, did any of your investigators find an impression on any of those uh, kilo bricks that would have tied the, those drugs back to one of those, uh, those cartels? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to bring up Lieutenant Tony Hall from our narcotics division. Uh, he is just an, an incredible asset to this agency and, and really knows the ins and outs of what the, uh, the cartels and the drug dealers are doing. And I'd like to give him an opportunity to talk about the great work uh, sure. that they did. Go ahead. I'll let you do your job. Yeah. <laughs> what was the question again, sir? Oh, wondering, um, with any of the, the bricks that you guys found, were there, were there any that were, had an impression uh, that would that would uh, label those as a type of brand of, uh, say, fentanyl or a type of brand of cocaine, because that's what the Sinaloa and CJNG are known for. Sure. I'm wondering if uh, you found anything that would, uh, found any uh, impressions that would link those particular drugs to one of those particular cartels. Sure. So, uh, of the uh, drugs that were recovered, there were uh, approximately seven whole kilogram quantities of fentanyl. Each of those kilogram quantities did, in fact, have a stamp on them. They are represented in some of the photos. If you look over on the board there, you'll see a seven, and you'll also see a LV, like a Louis Vuitton type symbol. Um, those stamps were on, actually on both sides of the kilogram. So there was a seven on one side and a Louis Vuitton on the other side. And as you said, they are linked to different cartels. Um, the seven has become pretty prominent throughout not just Northeast Florida, but throughout the country. Um, as to which cartel that can be associated with, I'm unsure at this time. Um, I did have a conversation with DEA, and we do have DEA representatives here today that might be able to talk a little bit more on that. But yes, they did all have stamps on them, and we do believe they were all tied to one cartel. Have you guys been in contact with any of your counterparts over in California? Are, is anyone in California handling that side of the investigation, since this is where a lot of that stuff is um, coming in from through the mail? Right. So we do know that, it, that the source of supply was coming out of California with the understanding we believe it came across the border of Mexico. Um, we are pursuing all avenues to track down those responsible on the California end. I can't go into a lot of details. It's an active investigation, uh, but we hope to be successful with that end. The Attorney General would like and, to speak to Sure, that excuse and me. And I'll just say, those are great questions. And one of the reasons why it's so important we start designating fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction, which it is, is because it will allow other agencies, non-traditional narcotics agencies like Department of Defense and the office that counters the weapons of mass destruction to start targeting those supply routes before they even get into the country. And so you have identified uh, the cartels, some of the main ones that DEA has even identified that is providing the supply pushing it into our country. It is manufactured in Mexico, we know that. And so if we can start getting a hold of that supply and stopping it before it gets into the country, these guys will not have the, the, the death and the events that they are seeing within our communities in Florida. How much of this too is upon our government to go after China? Because as we know, China supplies the supply, supplies with the ingredients 
to Mexico, where Mexico are using this super lab to create the fentanyl? Absolutely. So we know that China is, is delivering these precursors directly to Mexico. The cartels are taking those in, manufacturing this very, very cheap, potent, deadly substance, fentanyl, and then they are arranging for it to flood into our country. And so the pressure points need to be both not only the Mexican government to make sure that the cartels are um, stopped from manufacturing and most importantly shipping it into the United States, but also to ensure that China does its part to limit the production of the precursor chemicals. We know that Trump had some success there. Uh, we have seen them even use that as a, a diplomatic negotiating tool that they will stop going after those things or stop doing certain things as it relates to those precursors when they're dealing with the United States, which tells you and tells everyone standing up here and everyone in Florida should know, they understand that they are contributing to the death toll in the United States without ever even picking up a weapon. They have now killed more people in the United States with fentanyl than, than we lost in the entire Vietnam War. And I wanted to bring up too, because I know according to a Drug Enforcement Administration uh, 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 threat assessment, one of, the, one of the most recent ones, it's not just a majority of the drugs are coming in through the Mexican border, but a lot of those drugs are being uh, shipped to Canada and they're being driven across our northern border. How much, I wanted to ask you, you know, how much pressure do we need to put on our country to the north of us in terms of uh, stopping that flow that is dry, that is still coming into the northern border just as it's coming through the southern border? Traditionally, or, well, I should say historically, we saw a lot uh, being done through the mail, although DEA would tell you uh, the driving channels and supply routes are coming through Mexico because it's being manufactured there. DEA would even tell you that it are those two cartels that you named are the main driving forces. Uh, and we've got to start thinking outside of the box because the way we have addressed uh, narcotics historically is not working as it relates to fentanyl. And because of the death toll we're seeing, again, almost 300 people a day die of overdose, the majority of those from fentanyl. Because of the death toll in the United States, in Florida, we've got to start doing something different as to our enforcement. We've got to start targeting it before it hits the United States. And I am proud of the work that these folks are doing with the hand they've been dealt. It's a very sad thing that they're having to deal with this when we could be more proactive in seeking out these cartels and seeking out this substance before it ever gets into the country. But I want to commend you uh, for knowing the background on this. Uh, 